All right, so today's lesson is 10.1, perimeter. So perimeter is the sum of lengths of its side. When we see the word sum, hopefully you guys know that you are adding all the lengths of its side. These are formulas that you will need to memorize. I would, I would highly recommend that you make flashcards. So parallelogram, remember a parallelogram has opposite sides that are congruent. Okay, so that's a parallelogram and it's four, four line segments. You may use this formula, P is equal to W plus W plus L plus L, or P is equal to 2W plus 2L. I can tell you that this is the formula that I would like you to use. I will accept this one, but this is the one that I would like you to use. I can tell you in seventh and eighth grade, they will expect you to be able to use this formula and not this one. So you might as well memorize the one that seventh and eighth grade is expecting you to, to memorize. So a triangle, the formula is P is equal to side plus side plus side. I know some of my students said, well, why can't you do P is equal to 3S? Well, remember, not all triangles have are congruent. If, it's, if you use P is equal to 3S, this is only for an equilateral triangle. Okay, it's only for an equilateral triangle when all three sides are equal. And then number three is any figure, you're gonna add up all the sides. So if you have a figure that looks like this, then you would use however many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so it would be 9, so you would say P is equal to S plus S 9 times. So now this is the problem that you'll see, or something similar to this in your homework and classwork. It says find the perimeter of the figure. So looking at number 1, what formula would you use? You always have to write the formula, no matter what. What formula would you use? Is it a parallelogram, triangle, or any other figure? So here, looking at this, which one would you use? Hopefully you had said that this is a parallelogram, so this is the formula you would use. You would write P is equal to 2W plus 2L. And you notice that my L is in cursive, lowercase l. You could write 2L, capital L. You cannot do 2L like this because it looks like a 21 instead of a lowercase l. So this is you can't do. Replace your variable with numbers. So P, remember, stands for perimeter, is equal to 2 times 8 plus 2 times 12. Order of operation tells us that we have to multiply first. So you go P is equal to 16 plus 24. And then you go P is equal to 16 plus 24 is 40. If you just write P is equal to 40, I'm going to tell you it's half wrong. Don't forget your units. This is inches, so you have to write 40 inches. Looking at number two, what formula are you going to use for number two? Hopefully you had said that P is equal to S plus S plus S. Replace your variable with numbers that you know. So you have P is equal to 9 plus 9 plus 4. This is 9 centimeters because this is congruent to this side right here. So if this is 9, that side has to be 9. So you have P is equal to 18 plus 4. P is equal to 22 centimeters. Don't forget your units. All right, on the other side, Number three, please try to figure this on your own, and when you're ready, you can play, push play. Hopefully you had known the formula is P is equal to, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, so you write S plus S plus S plus S plus S plus S, five, six times. Then you replace your S with numbers, three plus six plus plus 5 plus 2 plus 6 plus 5. And then you add up your numbers. Well, the way I do this is I find my multiples or the ones I know. So I have 10 plus 6 and 3 is 9 plus 2 and 6 is 8. 
then p is equal to 9 plus 10 plus 17, and p is equal to 27, and my unit is meters. All right, now we're going to work backwards. Find the unknown measure algebraically. Remember, that is your what we've been practicing all this year. We give you the perimeter. We have the unknown measure. You have 2 and 3 centimeters. What formula do you use to find the perimeter of a triangle? Hopefully you have said P is equal to S plus S plus Caleb S. Caleb Dixon, please come to the front office. Caleb Dixon, please come to the front office. You replace your P with 12 is equal to, then replace 3 plus 2 plus, I always replace my S with X because sometimes my S looks like a 5 instead of an S. So I just replace it with whatever variable they tell me. So then you add up this, 3 plus 2, which is 5 plus X. Now some of you guys get this confused. You can always rewrite it as X plus 5 is equal to 12. And then hopefully that reminds you what this looks like. How do we get x by itself? You subtract 5 on both sides and x is equal to 7. And don't forget your units will be 7 centimeters. Alright, looking at number 2. This is a trapezoid. So here you write p is equal to s plus s plus s plus s. Replace P with 20 is equal to, you have 4 plus 2 plus, this side is equal to this side, so that's 4 plus X. Add up your 4 plus 2 plus 4, so 20 is equal to 10 plus X. Okay, if you need to rewri rewrite it, you write X plus 10 is equal to 20, so that you can, you know how to do it algebraically. You should know that you're subtracting 10 on both sides, and x is equal to 10, and your unit is inches. All right, the last one's a little bit different, because if you notice that all these tick marks means that they're all the same, and you have x. So here, your formula would be p is equal to, how many sides do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. Okay, replace P with 48, so 48 is equal to 8X. How do you get X by itself? Remember, a number next to a variable means multiplication, so the inverse of multiplication is division, so you can divide by 8, and X is equal to 6. Now here, we didn't give you a unit, so you have to write 6 units. 